everyone, this is Kieran. Today's exercise is looking at an aspect of our grip strength, particularly our ulnar grip. So it's gonna be focusing on these two fingers on the outside here. If you've had an injury to your hand, your wrist, your elbow, even your shoulder, um, and you feel like you're having difficulties with gripping things, um, then this would be a nice video for you to watch. So when we're thinking about grip, we're thinking about a few different things. And the reason we're talking about these in the different um, components around like the nerve innervation, so what we're talking about is motor innervation or the ability to send messages down to muscles to do things, is grip is primarily made up of um, contributions from three different nerves. Now you've got some other nerves which obviously play a role in more compound movements, so things that are going to bend your elbow or move your shoulder, we're looking at a couple other nerves and there's five sort of primary nerves that go down into the arm. Um, but in this particular case we're talking about the ulnar nerve and all the others have importance as well and we're going to talk about those in some of the other videos but just to give you sort of a, a quick context thing for this video uh, with the ulnar grip we're considering these two fingers here and other muscles that are part of what the ulnar nerve innervates so some stuff around the outside of the forearm here versus the median nerve is going to be these guys here with the thumb being part of that and then the thumb has a component with the ulnar nerve as well we'll talk about that later um, along with some uh, sort of finger tippy type grip like if you're gripping a big ball um, and then you've got your radial nerve as well, which is going to be more involved in lifting your wrist up. Now that's important for strength. If you ever tried to grip something with a, a neutral wrist versus your wrist extended, it can really impact things. Uh, and then the other two nerves, which we're not going to talk about as much through this video series, are the axillary nerve and the musculocutaneous nerve. And they impact the ability to move these areas up here, which can be a component in some other stuff. Um, so how this kind of thing is measured usually in studies, which is going to be part of what we reference in this video, is people, um, they'll uh, use a, what's called a handheld dynamometer, particularly a grip strength one. So they've got something like this and then they squeeze it together. Now it's quite nice because it gives out a, a pressure or a kilos that can be put out. And in this study, what they found was if they took out the ring finger and then they took out the pinky finger, you would see a progressive loss of total grip strength. So when you had just the median grip going for it versus plus the ring finger versus plus the pinky finger, you'd see very different numbers. And there was a range which averaged out at about around a 50% loss of grip strength when you lost these two contributing. Now that's quite a lot. So if you're considering that maybe you've had an injury in the past around like uh, say your ulnar nerve, or it could just be a wrist injury, a hand injury, and the, the mobility loss or the flexibility loss impacted the ability to use these guys when grabbing things, you may have never fully progressed that strength back. And it's really important to take it past just being able to use your hand without weight and then taking it into the tasks that are important for you. Places where this might be really useful, holding a shopping bag, holding a um, uh, like, a, like a bucket full of something, that sort of hook grip. We're gonna go through some examples and you can see. Uh, picking up a barbell, hanging from a bar, doing pull-ups. All these types of things are gonna involve that ulnar biased grip and you really need to be able to rehab it back. Plus, for whatever reason, some people that I see in clinic might have like an elbow discomfort or a shoulder discomfort. We've done some tests around there. We've ruled that area out as a problem. We've gone further down the chain and found that what's happening is they're not using the ulnar side of their grip. And usually it's from a previous injury that they didn't rehab fully. But once we start getting them to incorporate, just intentionally using that part of their hand to grip things, their elbow and their shoulder will start to quieten down and you get a nice, more sort of a, a better average dispersion of load throughout the whole upper limb, which is you know, an interesting way to start thinking about your training. How are you gripping things? So let's go through a couple examples. Um, and as we're going through those examples, we might talk about some other reasons why someone might lose this type of grip strength, particularly around like ulnar neuropathies, compression injuries, or stretching type injuries. Uh, and um, that might be uh, relevant for you if, if you are that kind of person. So let's have a look at a uh, kettlebell first, and then we'll jump into some, to some other apparatuses, okay? So to begin with, you just need something to hold, right? Now this is a eight kilo kettlebell. So not crazy heavy for me, 
could be a little bit heavy for someone else, could be heavy if that ulnar grip is an issue. But what you want to think about, I'm going to bring this up close for a second, is can you grip with these two fingers? Can you really get those guys involved? And you still want to get the whole hand involved, but can you get these two involved here? Particularly when we're doing this grip here. So I'm going to be really biasing the squeeze of these two. I'm still wanting to get the whole hand involved, but I'm going to start the grabbing of the kettlebell from the pinky and the ring finger into the rest of the hand instead of starting with the thumb middle and index finger and then working my way out because what you'll see over time for a lot of people is these guys get pretty relaxed and they're just holding on tight up through here so it could be something as simple as doing a farmer walk or you know kettlebell carry and really making sure that you're squeezing intentionally with that ring finger and the pinky okay holding out here same thing if i'm doing a bicep curl can i make sure that i'm still squeezing with those fingers and what you're going to find is that starts to increase the weights that you can lift you might find though that you start to get some more fatigue out through here just because you haven't used them in that way in a while all right so let's go check out what that might look like with a two-handed scenario on a barbell so with a barbell you're in a scenario where the bar is fixed so the flexibility of your wrist is going to be a factor here because if your wrist can't get into certain positions then you may not have access to the finger position to be able to grip the bar. When you're in a bit more of a neutral grip, oh sorry, not neutral, narrow grip like this, the potential to use more of your hand is a little bit higher. And that's just because of the neutral, which is where I was heading before, the neutral position of my wrist. I can squeeze with that ulnar grip and that median grip. Now the radial grip is just part of it because my wrists are a bit extended, right? So just by being in a little bit of an extended position, that's gonna happen, it kind of happens naturally. You don't grab in a really neutral position like this because it feels weaker. It's the same thing you see sometimes at um, like carnivals or, or sort of, you know, sort of, I guess those big exhibition events, whereas these guys are, have these bars that can you hang for 100 seconds, but the bar spins. What it does is it really kills your, your radial grip and it takes you into that neutral position and doesn't allow you to grip into this position here and so you lose out on a component of your strength right now if you were to go wider with your grip it's going to put your wrist into a bit of radial deviation meaning that the hand is moving towards the radius bone but what that does is it makes it harder for me to use my pinky and ring finger i still need to grip out there but because they're on more of a stretch on this outside of the wrist so by stretch meaning that the wrist is more lengthened through this outside area, it's going to be harder to leverage into those fingers. So it's just something you need to be aware of. And I think this is probably why we see a lot of this in the gym is because it's easier to squeeze with the median grip here with the thumb, middle finger and index finger, but you still need to try and contribute. So the difference in the tension, right? If I squeeze with just that sort of median grip, I'm feeling a lot of pec co-contraction going on. If I squeeze with the ulnar grip more, I feel a lot more co-contraction through my lats. So I'd rather have both, particularly if I'm doing something like a pulling exercise or a deadlift, which is what you'd be doing with the bar in that position. I really want my lats involved as part of that pulling movement. So you can see how potentially missing out on that ulnar grip can really impact the total movement. Um, and all you have to do is think about gripping with those guys during the exercise. Let's see what this looks like in sort of a hanging pulling position as well. So similar to the barbell, when we're up on the pull-up bar, depending on how the bar is orientated, whether it's more of a neutral type grip on like a pull-up apparatus, or I'm going into like this pull-up position or chin-up position, the flexibility around my elbow, shoulder, and wrist is going to dictate the position my hands can get into. And certain positions are going to allow me to leverage different aspects of my grip. Now, I swear, we know radial is always involved. Most positions tend to bias the median because it allows into here, but we also need that ulnar grip, which is out in here a little bit, all right? So let's see how that looks on a bar. If I start kind of narrow, then similar in here, I can be getting both of them involved. Now, I could sink into just that median grip, but if I squeeze with those pinkies as well, it's really, really going to help me be a little bit stronger because it's going to engage those lats. If I went wider, 
Let's move this band out of the way. It's going to be a little bit trickier, and this is probably why you see some of the wide pull-up bars a little bit slanted. It allows that wrist to not have to be as deviated, and you can use the outside of your hand a bit more. But if I come into here, so now that's very much just sitting into my thumb and index finger. And if I try and get my pinky involved, I can't even get it around the bar really. Now I can still pull up, but that's a lot harder than if I can get my pinky involved. And then there's other things as well that are going on with like what muscles can contribute based on that as far as around the shoulder. But it's kind of like a throwing, you see a bit of like a proximal to distal. Um, but with these type of movements, you do see that grip being a predictor of strength. And part of that's, uh, sorry, not a predictor of strength, but a, a predictor of mortality in older populations. So when you get into these kind of scenarios where anything where your grip's feeling compromised, you can't use your upper body as easily because the position doesn't allow you to. So another grip orientation, which can be kind of interesting is when your palm's facing the ground. So that can be when you're reaching for something, you grab it and you bring it back to yourself or, or vice versa, right? You're reaching out with something and placing it. And this can be a lot of the time where you see maybe someone hurt their shoulder or maybe they feel some pain in the elbow. And what I'll find in this position as well is that people aren't using their ulnar contribution as much. Now a bar is a nice way to force you into using it. So let's just see what that feels like and what it looks like, just to give you another sort of example of this principle. Now, if I hold the bar in front of me, right? Now that bar is pulling me down, okay? So my shoulder has to resist that, my elbow, my wrist, and my grip, because what's happening is my fingers are getting pulled down like this, right? They're getting pulled down by the bar. So, to give you an idea, this is 15 kilos. If I hold it out there and I use just my thumb and my median grip, that feels a lot heavier than if I get the little finger involved in the ring finger. If I go for just the ring finger, I can't even lift off my middle finger comfortably because I need it there to contribute to the grip strength. Now, if I use my whole hand though, I feel much stronger and I can do some movements there, right? Radial grip's always involved, it has to be, otherwise that wrist is just gonna go out like that, okay? But if you can make sure that you're using that principle, then you're gonna find that your general sense of effort improves and some of those niggles start to go away. So, kind of nice, right? So, hopefully that gives you some ideas around how to integrate, how to use your ulnar grip, that contribution of that ulnar nerve into gripping things. It's a super straightforward thing to do, but can be a big thing that's missing for a lot of people in their training and their rehab. And all you have to do is squeeze harder with that ring finger and the pinky finger, and the rest will start to happen. And you might notice that they actually fatigue faster, and that's a good indication that it's something worth continuing. Um, something I mentioned, I'll bring up some other sort of um, issues or like pathologies or injuries that this could apply to. You might see different neural injuries. So you might have like a neuropathy that's um, more of a, a painful condition where the, the motor impact isn't big on the nerve. So the messages can still go back and forth along the nerve, but maybe the, the sheath around the nerve, so the nociceptors of the nerve, the nerve uniform, have a, a sensitization to them. And you might have like, um, like a hyperalgesia. So you have symptoms that are down through here in this ulnar distribution that feel sort of different um, and they're um, quite quite sort of could be burny could be sharp could be like a, a tingling that isn't nice uh, you've also got um, things like uh, like an allodynia where it might be something that normally isn't painful so you could use like a cotton bud and that's kind of sore for some reason whereas on the other side it's not now these types of issues benefit a little bit from um, flossing exercises as well and you can find those on the channel just have a look for ulnar nerve flossing or ulnar nerve sliding that'll bring up those options and also in the video we'll talk about some of the rationale behind it um, but where this will be useful i think for a lot of people as well is when they have uh, more of an injury to the ulnar nerve probably through compression or stretch and common areas that that happens at are going to be on the inside of the elbow here or just in the wrist here there's a little tunnel in here underneath the hooker handmate and Basically, someone could be compressing on here for a while, so maybe they're leaning on something for a long time, 
and then that gets compressed to the point where the ability for those messages to go are impacted. And then as the nerve's healing, you're not using the muscle to its full potential, and so the muscle gets atrophied and wastes away a little bit. You can build that back, but you need to use it, right? Same thing here, if you're putting compression through this area, then you might find that the nerve gets injured as well, and you might see some atrophy of this part, this sort of um, hypothenar part of your hand where it starts to get smaller and less able. So if I go across like this with the opponons, I can feel the muscle bulk coming up, I can see it, it's similar to both sides. Um, so you might see this in like hand balancers a little bit where there's a chronic compression going on. It doesn't mean it's always gonna happen, but everyone's nerve structure is a little bit different. These nerves are very robust though. They can take a lot of compression and they can take it for a while. So it's really about listening to your symptoms. And if you're starting to get pins and needles tingling when you're doing something, try to give yourself a rest and come back once the symptoms have settled down. If you keep pushing into that, then you might be running into a long-term compressive issue. And again, it just takes a little while for it to settle. Um, other types of issues now might not be a little bit more specific to one side. Obviously diabetic neuropathies, these are we might see some numbness, um, again, loss of conduction going on. They're gonna benefit, you're gonna benefit in that case more just from general physical activity and doing strength work in particular, just to affect your blood glucose levels. That'll improve your symptoms. But we're, in terms of what we're talking about here, this would be more of a specific ulnar nerve injury, which we've kind of already outlined. Um, if you have any other questions, particularly around how these um, nerves are injured, how to treat them, how to assess them, then I can try and help a little bit. But of course, always, if you have an injury, get a, a diagnosis from a local health professional so they can see you in person. It's important to get that kind of assessment. Um, some of these assessments do require a hands-on assessment. Telehealth can be helpful, but it doesn't help everything. So once you have your diagnosis, then the treatment side of things is a lot more straightforward. Um, but anyway, hope you found this helpful, guys. And I'm gonna work through the other grips um, as I talked about, so the median and the radial components. Radial is kind of a straightforward one anyway, it's built into everything. Um, but if you're interested in some of the studies, have a look at the references as well. And you might be interested to see some of the, the differences. Like I said, 50% on average loss of grip strength if you don't use these guys, which is quite significant. So you might be leaving a lot of strength uh, on the table there to, to be used, which is quite cool. Quick changes for increases in strength, always a win. Cool, thanks for listening, guys. See you later. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.